Hello, it's Jill Francis here with Thinking Out Loud. So let's talk about love. Have you ever had a conversation with somebody where either you have brought it up or maybe they've said to you, you know, um, maybe we just need to love ourselves a little bit more. Or if we would just love ourselves, then we would handle certain situations differently. And what I find if you were to ask most people, myself included probably, if you were to say, do you love yourself? Do you really love yourself? I think most people would say, I do love myself. In fact, I think I'm pretty awesome. And oh, that's not my problem. I do love myself. I have good self-esteem. I'm very self-confident. Whatever words we use. But I think so much of how we love ourselves is much deeper than that. In fact, I think that most of us don't even realize that there's pieces of us that maybe we're not loving. And, um, you know, for a variety of reasons that, uh, you know, that shape us and, and make us feel a, a certain way about ourselves. Could be what others have said to us or, or how others have treated us that have made us feel either unworthy or undeserving. Um, and we tend to beat ourselves up a little bit. So I have thought about this actually for years um, because I've been very aware that the root of almost every problem or issue or relationship, uh, whatever is com coming up, can be traced back to how we feel about ourselves. And I also really believe that we can't give somebody what we don't have within us and what we're not giving ourselves. So if we are not loving ourselves and being really gentle and compassionate with ourselves, then we really can't be with other people. And that's that's what I believe anyway. We can't, we kind of have to fill our own bucket and then we can fill other people's. And even if we do, it doesn't mean we can't love them. I think that we do, but it, it could be purer. Sometimes we love people or do things for people. We do acts of love because it actually is filling a need within us. It's more about us than it is with them. And so I think as we get clearer, love ourselves more, forgive ourselves, are gentle, then we're able to sort of act in a truer way, if that makes sense. Anyway, as I was saying, I've been thinking about this for years. In fact, you know, I thought many years ago, like, I'm going to write a book. I want to write a book about love. And, and then knowing that, but you can't talk about love without starting with yourself. And I have analyzed this. I've analyzed myself. I've, I've been on a journey for a very long time. And honestly, I still don't have an answer to how, how do we love ourselves? How would you go about teaching somebody else to love themselves? Because I think it's a real process. And I think that often we don't even know what piece of ourselves isn't being loved until something shows up in our life. And then it, it, sh it, this happens over and over and over again. You know, I had an experience just recently. I was having a intuitive Reiki session with my daughter, who's a, a Reiki healer. And some things came up and, and what it came down to was there was a still some feelings of shame within me. And you know, my reaction was like, damn it, I thought I dealt with that. And um, I guess my point in that is sort of like, I don't know if we ever get it all done. You know, maybe this is just a forever journey and we just continue to heal pieces of ourselves and we continue to grow and we continue to love ourselves even more and more and more. And then we're able to give uh, more and more love. So anyway, having said all that, I, I do have some suggestions. Um, some of the, some of these are things that I've tried and some of these are, um, like, again, it's not a magic bullet, but maybe it will put us on the path to being conscious about how we talk to ourselves, how we, what we think about ourselves and how we treat ourselves and are we, are we treating ourselves in a really loving way? And so I think that it starts there and I think, you know, you've all heard this before. So treat yourself better, pamper yourself, light some candles, have a nice bath, go for a massage, do some nice things, pamper yourself. And, and all of that I think is very valid. And I'll tell you one of the reasons why I think it is, is it's not just the doing it for yourself, but it's energetically what you're putting out there. Cause you're saying, I matter. 
I'm important. I'm going to do these things for me because I'm important. I'm, I have to be somewhere on my list and I'm choosing to put myself at the top of the list. And so I think by doing those things and starting to treat yourself better, um, you kind of, you, you kind of switch up the energy around how you treat yourself and how you feel about yourself. And so that would be number one. Um, just, just start doing it. Even if you don't feel necessarily, you know, uh, even if it's a struggle, I guess. And I know it is, especially, I think, especially in our very busy lives, just to find, you know, half an hour for yourself isn't always easy, but it's important. And then the second thing I would suggest is really start paying attention to the voices in your head and the messages that you're sending to yourself. And I've become very aware, not only what comes out of my own mouth, but I've become very sensitive to listening to what other people say about themselves. And if you're listening, it's very evident and very sad sometimes what does come out of people's mouths and such a clear reflection, unfortunately, of, of how they see themselves. And so I would, I would say like, so the next step is just to really watch, you know, when you walk by the mirror in the morning, do you say, good morning, beautiful. Or do you go like, oh my gosh, I look terrible today. And, or whatever that voice in your head says. And so I would just sort of challenge you to catch yourself and again, not beat yourself up that you said it, but become aware of what you were thinking, what you were saying to yourself. And then I'm going to suggest a little Ho'oponopono. If you don't know what Ho'oponopono is, I would just recommend that you go and check it out. We'll, we'll probably get into Ho'oponopono um, in, in some more videos. But so th there's different ways to practice Ho'oponopono. Probably the most famous, um, made popular by Joe Vitale, um, who studied with Dr. Hugh Len, who, who basically... Um, created or popularized this practice. A uh, very fascinating man. But it's really four phrases. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And I love you. So what I'm going to suggest is when, when a thought comes up you, and you say something negative to yourself, I'm so fat, or whatever you tell yourself on a regular basis, <laughs> that you immediately catch yourself and then just go, thank you. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. And then follow it with, I love you. I love you for thinking it. I love you for being honest. I love you for just, for feeling whatever you're feeling. Just before you dismiss it and before you beat yourself up for saying it, just appreciate that you're recognizing it. And then you can say to yourself with great compassion, I'm sorry please forgive me. It's really powerful. I've been practicing it for quite some time now. And I, it, it is just, it will just change things. It really, really will. And it will definitely change if you practice it. Um, how you feel about yourself and how you see yourself. And you just will, you just won't say those things to yourself anymore because it'll be really, you know, you'll really feel it. And I'm also reminded of Louise Hay and, you know, her recommendation um, was when you start on this journey of really loving yourself and healing your life by loving yourself was to look in the mirror 300 times a day and look yourself in the eye and say, I love you. Try it. Try it even once because I'm curious. It's a bit uncomfortable if you haven't done it before. Look yourself in the eye and say, I love you. Okay, so having said that, I think it's just really about making a decision. Just saying, I will not talk negatively about myself anymore. And then, like I said, then you become aware of it when you, we, because the thing is, these, these thoughts and feelings and beliefs that we have about ourselves, they run really deep. They are voices from our childhood, voices from society, voices from our parents, our family, our siblings, you know, and it's amazing the things that stick in our mind, you know, one comment someone said when you were seven years old and to this day, you're still self-conscious about, you know, a, some part of your body or some part of yourself. 
So I don't know why these things stick, but they do. Um, and we can just become aware of them and start to undo them. And in doing so, we'll become a lot more accepting of ourselves and, and truly loving ourselves. Now, having said all that, um, that almost feels like the easy part because I think what generally happens is that we can be going along fine and then something happens in our life. A situation comes up, could be in a relationship, could just be something that triggers us. And, um, and, and we react. <clears throat> and sometimes we react in um, not a very positive way. And I think that, again, um, I'm, I'm going to just suggest, and I've sort of tried to be very, become much more aware of this myself, is that when these situations come up, just to sort of recognize what is the situation trying to teach me or show me. Because, you know, especially when these things come up between us and another person, it's never about the other person, even though we think it is. And we can be really angry, we can get really frustrated, we can be very irritated. <laughs> and we can want to blame them for all of it. And But it's really not. I'm sorry to say that, but it's not about them. It's only about you. And all of these experiences and situations come up for, so that we can recognize something inside of us that needs to be healed. So it's an opportunity. And that's why, again, we say thank you. Thank you for showing up in my life. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. So I know it's super hard because when you're in those moments, it's often emotional. Um, but I think that sometimes I, what I like about Ho'oponopono actually, is that it takes some of that emotion out. You don't have to analyze it. You don't even have to get angry. Just say thank you for showing up in my life. And then, like I said, if you, if you want to analyze it, like, why is this happening? Why am I, why am I getting so upset about something somebody else is doing or saying to me? Because I can pretty much guess that whatever you're upset about is not about the thing you think is happening. It's about something else. And we don't always want to admit that. And we all, we don't even want to look at it. But if you're brave enough, you know, you can look be beneath that because there's probably just something inside of you that needs to be healed. That's all. Okay. Um, I think that's really all I wanted to say today. I know we're going to talk about some of these things in more detail, and I really look forward to that. I want to thank all of my my new subscribers. Uh, this has been a really fun journey, and I really thank you for your feedback and your comments. Um, you have inspired me to do more, and I'm just really grateful to be on this journey, and I'm really grateful that you're on the journey with me. So thank you from the bottom of my heart.